Philip Howard is great. Um, wonderful place, great reputation. How long have you been in this site now? We've been here, it must be six, coming up 16 years, I think it is. Is it really? From the original one in St. James? From the original site in St. James, which oh. I still have fond memories down there. We did about seven years, six, seven years there. So yeah, net, all up actually, we're now about 22 years. I mean, really, the squares, the cooking at the square has remained very similar in many ways throughout that time. I am one of those chefs who is completely unmotivated by the, the, the quest for, 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 for change, for change's sake, for innovation, for technical wizardry, for... That's just not what motivates me. What, 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 what motivates me is, I mean, it's a word that I, that I use a lot, but it is deliciousness. That's, that's, what, that's what I'm into. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and I suppose the passage of time is really driven by, uh, by the seasons. We all talk about it now, but actually we've been doing it for, for, for decades at the square. Um, but the heart and soul of the cooking has, has remained the same. The square's food will always have heart and soul because it is, it's eating food. It's not food to be oohed and aahed at and try and work out how it was done. But we've got to make sure that it stays um, exciting and, and progressive in many ways. It is a challenge for the square going forward, you know, after, after 22 years of, 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 of you know, solid uh, experience and journeying, is staying relevant in the London eating scene, which boy is changing at a, at a, at a fast rate. And um, it's not just a challenge for the square, it's a challenge for any restaurant to get, get footfall through its doors. But, so, but, so, you know, but a restaurant that's been around for such a long time, um, in a market that is, if it's going to ever do anything, it's going to continue to shrink because there is so much more accessible stuff out there. The fine dining end of the, of the stick is, is, is tricky. Um, we've got a new head chef in place, Gary. He is also an extraordinarily good cook. Um, he is a little bit more um, meticulous and, and precise and technical than, than I am at heart. My natural cooking is is quite free-flowing and, and loose in many ways, very much ingredient-driven. Gary is a little bit more technical and, and, uh, and a little bit more modern, and, he's, and, he, is, and he, has, he has traveled the world far and wide, so he's very savvy with, with, with food in general. And, um, uh, and it is exciting because in terms of going forward, um, what I think we have is a, is a team that is, that is, that is set to take the, the, the cooking at the square and the food on a slightly, you know, slightly fresher journey and, and progressive to, and, and overall I hope improve it. It's just a, it's just a simple thing, it's off the, um, off the lunch menu. So uh -huh. it's a salad of herages, tomato with some cured sea bass, right. tempura or prawn. Just it with capizana olive oil. The tomatoes are, I mean, they're nothing without decent seasoning on there and decent oil, they just, they just taste of nothing. So when you get all these other things on there, that's when you get all the flavour going out of the tomatoes. Okay. It's very simple, yeah, we can, so you get all, as long as you've got loads of immaculate elements, you know, the, the presentation is actually quite simple. You know, the tomatoes, as I said, they just sink for themselves once you've got all that seasoning on there. It's just a pure puree of avocado. We use hash avocados from Peru, the cured sea bass. We get um, some coriander, a little bit of green chilli, a little bit of mint, some sugar and some salt. We blitz it all together and we end up with a thin, thick green paste. And we just smear it over the bass, okay. leave it for about six or seven hours. Right. And it just absorbs it all, similar to a gravel axe. Right. Just salmon. And then wash it off and we just end up with this lovely translucent bass. We have the tempura of um, prawn. This is um, a vinaigrette of minced nocarella olive. Okay. Some more olive oil mm -hmm. and some um, tomato juice. There's some um, wood sorrel. It's quite lemony and it's quite sharp. It just brings quite a lot to, to everything. And we have some bronze fennel tips. Mm. A little bit of olive oil, and that's it. This is a cured Cornish sea bass with mm -hmm. tempura of prawn and um, heritage tomatoes. And how important is that combination of the taste and, 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 and the look? You know, I think... Um, as far as I'm concerned, eating delicious food is a very straightforward thing. You know, when I put something good in my mouth, and it doesn't matter whether it's a, a, a chicken tikka, a burger, a, a, a truffled longestine, um, a kebab, a, a, you know, a piece of grilled over sole. If something is delicious, it is immediately obvious to all consumers, I believe. Yet the problem is, us chefs get very caught up in the process of cooking, and the substance of the food is, is, is very important, and, um, and the flavour of the food is critical. 
yes, how we how we present it on a plate, of course, because of course is important. But but ultimately, people come back to the square because the food is delicious, and um, and and that's something that's that that that, that is really important to me. So there's a maturity about this restaurant. You feel comfortable when you come in. It's uh, it's always much larger than than I remember it. Strangely enough, um, but it's the tables are well spaced, and but it's still as intimate. Yeah, I mean, I think it's one of the important things about the square is the fact that it's not some hushed, tiny little dining room. There's some temple of gastronomy and lots of chef worship and food worship. It is actually, it's, it, it, is, it is a great restaurant. It is, you know, we're here to provide fantastic hospitality, serve lots of delicious food. But yes, there's an, there's, there, are, there are enough tables in here to generate a, a proper an atmosphere, and that is important. Um, and uh, it is a good, it's a great space. It's, it's a great space with fantastic window frontage and... Um, it is, that's an important part of what the square is. How many cupboards do you have here? We seat, God, I don't know what it is, but I think we seat about 70 in the main room and, and, and we have a further 18 in the private dining room. Um, and uh, we don't do many relays, so you know, a good night is 80, quite often I hit 90, um, quite a night, slightly less so, but, you know, but it's, we've, we, we've, we've got good, good capacity. And you obviously have a very regular following here. Yeah, we do. Um, we have... Um, I mean, like I said, at, at this level, what is unusual about the square is that the food is, it is, it is here simply to give pleasure. We're not trying to impress in any other way. And our regulars are the people who really respond to that.